no? Criminal jurisdiction of courts. Now we have three. Criminal jurisdiction of the MTC, MCTC, and MEPC. Criminal jurisdiction of the Regional Trial Court. Ay, nakulangan din yung MTC, MCTC. And criminal jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan. So for uh, criminal procedure for crimes, no prosecution of crimes, uh, these courts no have jurisdiction. MTC, RTC, and the Sandigan Bayan. Now let's proceed to criminal jurisdiction of MTC, MCTC, and MATC. So, except in cases falling within the exclusive jurisdiction or regional jurisdiction of the RTC and of the Sandigan Bayan, the MTC shall exercise the following criminal jurisdiction. So, you have to memorize no, the enumeration of cases. Dilit lang ingon nga, ipamiliarize in yung sarili because uh, naamangod siya yung mga threshold, no? yung number of years, etc. So, you have to memorize uh, the following cases that fall under uh, the jurisdiction of MTC, MCTC, and MATC. Before we begin, what is the difference between MTC, MCTC, and MATC? Okay. Actually, they have the same jurisdiction. They all refer to municipal trial courts. Kaya lang, um, murag ang, ang scope lang sa ilahang territorial jurisdiction ang nagkalahian sa ilahang tulo. Uh, let's start with MTC. Actually, napay isa ade ani no, ang MTCC or Municipal Trial Court in Cities. So when you say Municipal Trial Court, uh, these are uh, inferior courts uh, located in the in, in a certain municipality. Isa lang ka munisipyo ang covered ana. When you say MTCC, or municipal trial courts in cities, meaning to say the, the, the MTC is located in a city. Okay? Kaya in cities ang tawag sa iya. Just like, for example, the MTCC of Tagum City. When you say MCTC, municipal circuit trial courts, uh, these are trial courts uh, located in uh, various municipal. Uh, in a municipality covering uh, more than one municipality. Uh, let us say, for example, the MCTC of Asuncion, Davao del Norte, which covers uh, municipality of Asuncion and municipality of New Corilla. So, kaya ang tawag sa kanya, circuit siya na trial court kasi marami, uh, maraming municipality na scope yung municipal trial court. When you say METC, this is uh, particular ni siya sa Metro Manila. Metro, uh, Metropolitan Trial Court, ang tawag na sa iya. Okay? Pero, uh, with respect sa iyahang jurisdiction, mga cases falling under uh, the jurisdiction of the MTC, same lang silang tulo. Okay? So, let's continue, no? So, number one is uh, they have exclusive original jurisdiction. Okay, what, what does exclusive original jurisdiction mean? Ano ibig sabihin ng EOJ? Ibig sabihin, siya lang at wala nang iba ang may jurisdiction ng mga cases na ito. Meaning to say, you cannot file it in the regional trial court or in the Sandigan Bayan. Kasi nga, exclusive. Okay. Exclusive sila sa MTC. So, uh, in case, no, supposing that you have you filed a case uh, that that should fall under the jurisdiction of the MTC, you file ni mo sa RTC, then uh, that case may be dismissed for lack of jurisdiction. Why? Because the case uh, is exclusively covered under the jurisdiction of the MTC. So, that's uh, the meaning of exclusive original jurisdiction. Kasi later, we will learn about appellate jurisdiction. No? I-distinguish na to na sila. 
Okay, let's continue, no? Violations of city or municipal ordinances no, committed within their respective territorial jurisdiction. So, kung, if for example, the city or the municipality um, issued uh, ordinances with penal provision, take note, because if the ordinance does not provide for a penal provision, then that ordinance is not a criminal case. No? It is uh, it, uh, so, dili siya pwede i-file as a criminal case. Kaya wala man siya penal provision. Because we have uh, ordinances that uh, that do not provide for penalty, only for administrative fine. Okay, kung administrative lang siya, administrative lang po siya nga case. Dili siya criminal. Now, if uh, there is violation of city or municipal ordinance, then uh, the case should be filed before the municipal trial court because the MTC has the exclusive jurisdiction over uh, these kind of violations. Second one is uh, offenses punishable with imprisonment. Okay, offenses punishable with imprisonment. <laughs> uh, with imprisonment not exceeding six years. So, kung ang crime, ang yahang ka ng penalty for imprisonment, wala ni sobra o six years, irrespective of the amount of fine. So, ang yahang jurisdiction shall be in the MTC. Okay? Regardless of other imposable or accessory penalties, including the civil liability arising from such offenses irrespective of kind, nature, value, or amount. What is an example of criminal cases with uh, imprisonment of not exceeding six years? Can you think of a criminal offense not exceeding six years in the revised penal code? I bet. A libel case. O, ano pala yung penalty ng libel? Pression correctional, ma'am. Pression correctional. So, pression correctional, mga six months and one day to six years lang man yun siya, di ba? Pag pression correctional. So, yes, meaning to say, uh, kailangan mong tingnan yung penalty ng, ng crime before mo ma-determine kung Ano ba ang uh, kung saan ba siya properly i-file? Okay? Third one is kung penal uh, where the only penalty is a fine, fine lang. Wala siyang imprisonment. Uh, sabi ng uh, rules of court, ang jurisdiction depende kung magkano yung fine. 'Di ba sabi natin kanina na kapag may imprisonment, ang kailangan mo lang tingnan is pila katuig siya ipriso. But, irrespective siya. Ah, irrespective kung magkano yung fine. So, hindi mo na kailangan tingnan kung magkano yung fine. Yung, yung imprisonment lang. But if fine lang yung penalty, so yung amount niya, uh, ang de uh, determining factor, bago mo malaman kung yung jurisdiction ba is under the municipal trial court. And magkano yun? Sabi ng rules of court ng DP 129 Section 32 Paragraph 2 It shall have exclusive original jurisdiction over offenses punishable with a fine of not more than 4,000 pesos. So kung sobra na yan ng 4,000 then hindi na siya under sa MTC. We also have offenses involving damage to property through criminal negligence. Take note that uh, the 
the reckless imprudence must result only to damage to property. Hindi dapat, uh, hindi dapat mixed siya with homicide, for example. It should not involve damage to persons. And if, uh, in case, the reckless imprudence resulted to homicide to, or to damage to persons, then that will not fall under the jurisdiction of the municipal trial court. Violations of BP 22 by express provision of Batas Pambansa bilang 22. Sabi ng special law na yan, yung jurisdiction daw exclusively, shall exclusively fall under MTC. Next, uh, cases fall, uh, cases uh, falling under the rules on summary procedure. Okay, as enumerated. You have violations of traffic laws, rules, regulations, violations of rental law, and violations of municipal or city ordinances. And we also have yung mga criminal cases na yung imprisonment not exceeding six months or a fine not exceeding 1,000 pesos or both, respective of other imposable penalties, accessories, or otherwise, no? So, take note of these cases, no? And we also have offenses involving damage to property through criminal negligence, where the imposable fine does not exceed 10,000 pesos, okay? So do not confuse yourselves no, with these provisions. Kung napansin ninyo, um, na-ashay ka criminal cases not exceeding six months. Diba we said earlier that we have enu already enumerated earlier no, yung mga eto. So nasulod siya diri sa not exceeding six years. Ang pasabot lang anang summary procedure is that um, na-ashay ka na ano, rules na nasa regular rules na gitanggal sa procedure. So, hence, yung pangalan niya na summary procedure. May mga tinanggal na mga requirements, no? <clears throat> na mga steps. So, kapag yan lang yung crime na nakomit mo, not exceeding six months yung penalty, or a fine not exceeding 1,000, then ang procedure is summary in nature. And uh, the same is true with uh, offenses involving damage to property through criminal negligence. Basta yung Imposable fine will not exceed 10,000 pesos. And sabi ng rules of court, summary lang yung procedure. Uh, otherwise, kapag sumobra na sa threshold, then the regular rules of procedure shall apply. Then, we also have a special jurisdiction to decide on applications for bail in criminal cases in the absence of all RTC judges. Take note that this uh, does not fall under the exclusive original jurisdiction of the MTC, special lang siya, no? in case lang, in the absence of RTC judges. Now, let's go to criminal jurisdiction of the regional trial court. Okay? May EOG na naman, no? exclusive original jurisdiction. In all criminal cases, no, not within the exclusive jurisdiction of any court, tribunal, or body except those now falling under the exclusive and concurrent jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan. Okay, actually, the Regional Trial Court is uh, referred to as the Court of General Jurisdiction. Why? Because if the case will not fall under the Municipal Trial Court, nor with the Sandigan Bayan, then definitely it will automatically fall under the jurisdiction of the RTC. Kapag walang sinabi, Sa RTC yan siya. General kasi siya na jurisdiction. Appellate jurisdiction, ito na yun, di ba? What is the difference between exclusive original jurisdiction and uh, what, is, what is the difference between uh, exclusive original jurisdiction and appellate jurisdiction? Uh, when you say exclusive original jurisdiction, di ba sabi ko kanina na kapag ikaw, na, uh, kapag ang MTC ang may exclusive original jurisdiction, meaning to say, hindi mo pwedeng ipalyan sa ibang korte. Diyan lang dapat. 
when you say original jurisdiction meaning to say for the first uh, first filing mo ng case okay yung yung initial filing mo ng case should be in that particular court kapag sinabing exclusive original jurisdiction meron din tayong tinatawag na concurrent original jurisdiction anong ibig sabihin ng concurrent meaning to say ano kasi may mga cases na pwedeng i-file either sa RTC or sa Sandigan Bayan. Kasi meron daw silang concurrent jurisdiction. So pwede na it's either sa kanilang dalawa. But once you have filed the case in the RTC, you can no longer file that in the Sandigan Bayan. Once the RTC have acqu has acquired jurisdiction over that case. Pero kung mamili ka, asa ka mag-file, pwede nga either sa RTC or sa Sandigan Bayan. Okay? Concurrent man ang iyang jurisdiction. Okay? Now, we also have this term, appellate jurisdiction. Anong ibig sabihin yan? From the word appeal. Meaning to say, kapag pagtalo ka or kapag agreed ka sa decision ng, ng court having the original jurisdiction over the case, you can elevate the case to the appellate court. Kaya na may saka ni mo ba? So, meaning to say, kapag ikaw na court, ang function mo is to review the decision of a lower court, then ang ginagawa mo is an appellate jurisdiction. Okay? So, uh, kaya ang tawag dyan is appellate jurisdiction. So, we have here, appellate jurisdiction over all cases decided by the MTC within its territorial Jurisdiction. Ang, ang ibig sabihin lang ito, kapag may mga decision ang MTC, i-appeal mo daw yan kapag agreed ka to the regional trial court. This is uh, with respect to criminal cases. Ha? Special jurisdiction to handle exclusively criminal cases as designated by the Supreme Court. So, so if the Supreme Court will assign to the regional trial court uh, cases which ordinarily are not under its jurisdiction then special jurisdiction jurisdiction yan siya jurisdiction over criminal cases under specific laws uh, di ba sabi natin jurisdiction over the subject matter is conferred by law so uh, while we say that uh, RTC is a court of general jurisdiction once uh, a particular criminal case doesn't fall under MTC or Sandigan Bayan. Pero, uh, it can still handle cases if under the law, siya ang may jurisdiction. Ayan. So, ano yung mga specific laws that uh, uh, provide for the jurisdiction of RTC? Number one is uh, written defamation. Second one is... Uh, Jurisdiction of designated courts over cases in violation of the Comprehensive Dangerous Act of 2002 or RA number 9165. So, meron ang tawag natin sa mga RTC na designated as uh, designated no for for dangerous drugs cases. Ang tawag natin sa kanila drugs court. Violations of intellectual property rights. Implementing the Intellectual Property Code. Another one is uh, with respect to cases no under the Family Code. It is the RTC designated as a family court that has jurisdiction over those cases involving families, dispute no between families, such as for example support, adoption, etc. No about family, annulment of marriage, etc. Uh, but those are civil cases. <laughs> okay, jurisdiction in... Ma uh, we are talking about criminal cases now. Jurisdiction in money laundering cases, no? Generally, it will fall under the regional trial court. Later on, you will learn ano yung mga exceptions. Now, let's go to criminal jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan. So, the, the, the legal basis no, for the jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan, 
can be found in Presidential Decree 1606. Nandyan yung jurisdiction ng Sandigan Bayan. Okay. So, the Sandigan Bayan has exclusive original jurisdiction over the following cases. Number one, violations of Ano lang dapat yung tandaan sa Sandigan Bayan? If, ang tandaan nyo dito, if one or more of the accused are officials occupying positions in the government. Okay? Kung sa Bisaya pa, no? kung sa Tinamban pa, pag ang isa gani or more than isa sa mga akusado is a public officer or employee. Oh. That's the, ano, that's the first thing that uh, you should know, no? For uh, for this particular uh, court, no, Sandigan Bayan. Parang ano siya ba? Para sa mga government employees siya or officials. So, kapag may makita ka sa facts na itong accused is a government employee or official, then that's a red flag, no, for for kanang, for indetermining the jurisdiction. So, pag makita ni mo na eh, government employee, oh, teka muna government employee ito. So, will it fall under the jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan or under the general jurisdiction of the Regional Trial Court? Ayan. So, so yan yung una mong titingnan, no? And, pangalawa, if, for example, yung mga case, uh, criminal case are violations of the following laws. Number one, violations of RA number 3019 or yung tinatawag natin Anti-Graft and Corruption Practices Act. Violations of RA number 1379, an act declaring forfeiture no, in favor of the state, or ang tawag natin dito is forfeiture cases. No? We also have uh, under the revised penal code, yung provisions from Article 210 to 212, bribery. Okay? So, uh, di ba I mentioned earlier na paano mo ba malalaman na ang case is under the Sandigan, maybe under the Sandigan Bayan? Kasi pwede naman kasi na public official ka, pero yung case mo will still fall under the jurisdiction of the RTC. Pwede naman kasi yon. But, uh, kailangan mo lang iyan no, na pag once ganina ay public official, so, Mag-ano ka na, mag-careful ka in analyzing the problem. Ano ba yung crime na nakumit niya? Is it a crime uh, committed in relation to his public office? Yung mga ganyan. So, now let's uh, enumerate, no? Sino yung mga government officials na kapag nag-commit sila ng, ng netong mga naka-enumerate na mga offenses, ang case nila will fall under the Sandigan Bayan. Okay, number one, Officials of the executive branch. So, alam yun naman kung ano yung executive branch, di ba? From president, vice president, uh, mga secretaries of uh, departments, Department of Health, mga ganyan, di ba? So, so uh, these uh, offices no, are under the executive branch. So, sino-sino sa executive branch? Kasi hindi naman lahat ng nasa executive branch under sa Sandigan Bayan. Okay, we have regional director and higher, classified as grade 27 and higher of the Compensation and Position Classification Act of 1989. Wala, Okay, so so you check now if the the public official is a regional director and higher, no, for as long uh, as the grade salary grade niya is twenty seven and higher. So kapag siya ay nakakomit ng crime, let's say anti graft and corruption practices act, then yung kanyang case dapat ipile sa Sandigan Bayan. Hindi kailangan ipile sa RTC or sa NTC. Kasi nga, yung EOJ niya is with the Sandigan Bayan. Now, may nakalagay dyan specifically including, meaning 
kasali daw itong mga naka-enumerate. Ayan, pakita ko sa inyo. Okay, number one is yung provincial governors, vice governors, members of the SP, provincial treasurers, assessors, engineers, and other provincial department heads. So, um, even if ang alam ko yung mga provincial department heads, hindi sila uh, SG27, I think SG26. So, so, still, sabi ng batas, dahil Par, uh, specifically included ka, hindi mo pwedeng i-argue na hindi, hindi limang ko grade 27 and higher. Oh, so, for as long as you are specifically included, you are included no, under the jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan. We have city mayors, vice mayors, members of the SP, city treasurer, assessors, engineers, and other city department heads. Officials of the diplomatic service occupying the position of consul and higher. Philippine Army and Air Force colonels, naval captains, and all officers of higher rank. We have officers of the PNP while occupying the position of provincial director and those holding senior superintendent or higher. Then we have city and provincial prosecutors and their assistants and officials and prosecutors in the office of the ombudsman. Oh, you memorize them all. Ah. You memorize. <laughs> then we have presidents, directors, or trustees, or managers of GOTCs, state universities, or educational institutions, or foundations. So for example, directors of PhilHealth. Diba? You've heard the news about PhilHealth. So, yung case nila, uh, if for example, uh, there are allegations that they have committed uh, violations of the of Republic Act number 3019 under, or the Anti-Graft and Corruption Practices Act, then yung case nila should be filed before the Sandigan Bayan. And please take note of the case of People versus Morales, GR number 166355, May 30, 2011. Uh, that is included in your recitation. <clears throat> Members of Congress and officials thereof, uh, let's me, uh, let, let, let us give you an example of atong president, directors, or trustees, or managers of GOCC. We have this case of uh, Serana versus Sandigan Bayan, yung student regent, kasi member siya ng ano, student regent siya, member siya ng board of trustees ng state university ng UP, okay, ng University of the Philippines. Uh, read uh, this case also, no? So, uh, I think the contention here is that sabi niya, isa lang daw siyang simple student and did not receive any salary as a student regent, uh, sabi niya. And could not fall under any salary grade. Diba kasi sabi natin, kapag yung position mo is SG is 27 and higher, we're under the Sandigan Bayan. Pero ang sabi ng Supreme Court is uh, hindi uh, the argument of the the student uh, was struck down of by the Supreme Court, stating that um, as as member or as as part of the board of trustees, no. So, isa din siyang director. Director siya ng state university kasi nga, member siya ng board of trustees. And therefore, it doesn't matter if he or she is not receiving salary. Kasi nga, pag specifically included ka 
sa enumeration, hindi nagmamatter kung ang sweldo mo ay SG27 and higher. Okay? So, sabi ng Supreme Court na since part ka ng Board of Regents, then you are under the jurisdiction of the uh, Sandigan Bayan. Now, let's go to Congress sa legislative branch. Okay? Members of Congress and officials thereof classified as grade 27 and up under the Compensation and Position Classification Act of 1989. Members of the judiciary without prejudice to the provisions of the Constitution. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Uh, if, for example, yung member ng judiciary is an impeachable officer, then uh, hindi sila pwedeng kasuhan under the Sandigan Bayan. Kasi nga, uh, they are impeachable officers. They should uh, be impeached first, no? Before they can be uh, uh, charged with criminal cases, ordinary criminal cases. Chairman and members of constitutional commissions. Again, without prejudice to the provisions of the constitution. Um, all other national and local officials classified as grade 27 and up under the Compensation and Position Classification Act of 1989. Now, di ba kanina, tatlo yung offenses, classification. Now, here comes other felonies or felonies, whether simple or complex with other crimes, committed by the public officials and employees mentioned in subsection A of the section in relation to their office. So, meaning to say, this refers to the offen, uh, offense na, na, na hindi nagfall under these cases. Itong violations of RA 3019-137 and by the rule. So, dito siya sa other offenses. Okay? Parang catch-all phrase siya. Provided the elements are complied with. And what are those? Number one, the offense is committed by a public official or an employee mentioned above. Di ba sabi ko, uh, kapag ang pinag-uusapan ay jurisdiction ng sandigan ba yan, tingnan mo kung sino ang accused. Ang accused ba ay isang public official or public employee? Ayan. So, if yes, then... Uh, pwede, no? Pwede if mafall siya sa Sandigan Bayan. Pero, merong second element. The offense is committed in relation to their office. Yan, importante, no? Kasi kapag hindi naman siya related sa function mo as a public officer or employee, then, hindi mag, ano, uh, the, the, the jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan will not come into play, okay? For example, the public official had committed rape. Take note that rape can be committed by any person whether you are a public official or not. So, even if you are a public official, hindi naman siya committed in relation to your office, di ba? Ano ba yung mga examples ng uh, offenses na committed in relation to your office? Technical malversation. Yan. Diba? Ano yung technical malversation? Yan yung, for example, yung fund is, may special fund for a certain project. Sabihin natin, road, okay, uh, ba, uh, ano yun? Ano yung ano? A building na lang, for example, ABC building, no? pa, parang ganyan. And then, instead of, uh, Instead of using that money or using that special fund for the construction of ABC building, you malverse the money and uh, constructed another building. Let us say, DEF building. So, sabi ng batas, even if yung project na, uh, yung project na napuntahan ng pera is pub for public use pa rin, for as long as hindi siya intended doon, kinuha mo sa other fund, that is technical malversation. Now, will that fall under the Sandigan Bayan? Let us examine. Number one, is the accused a public official or an employee? If the answer is yes, then the first element is complied with. Second one, the, is the offense committed in relation to their office? If the answer is yes, then all the elements are complied with. So in the case, Let's say, for example, public official yun siya, so complied with ang first element. 
Second element, since it pertains to public uh, government projects, then therefore, the offense is definitely committed in relation to the office. So, even if not expressly enumerated no, under dito sa mga provisions, for as long as na complete yung element, then the jurisdiction will be under the Sandigan Bayan. Now, when can you say that a case is committed in relation to the public office? Paano mo ba masasabi na ang crime ay nakumit in relation to a public office? Sabi ng batas, as a rule, to make an offense com one committed in relation to the office, the relation has to be such that, in the legal sense, the offense cannot exist without the office. Uh, yung, yung sinabi natin kanina, Ano ka? Um, um, <clears throat> you are the provincial treasurer, treasurer. No, tapos, tapos ang nangyari is uh, because of uh, your position as a provincial treasurer, nakadispal ko ka o collection sa province, no? So that is uh, malversation only, simple malversation. Okay? Because uh, you use the money for your own personal consumption. So ngayon, ang question dyan, kung isa ka lang ordinaryo na tao, makakanakaw ka ba ng pera ng gobyerno kung wala kang posisyon sa gobyerno? The answer is obvious. No. So, meaning to say, dapat yung offense na commit niya dahil meron siyang position sa gobyerno. So, just like for example, the issue, the current issue now on PhilHealth, di ba? So, ayun, ano man yun? Nag-fall ba yun sa anti-graft and corruption practices act? And there is no question about that, no? What if, for example, they have committed a different offense? No? So, you should examine the elements, no? And the offense must be in relation to the public office. Uh, I will give you an example. Um, failure. Ito, failure of an accountable officer. Failure of an accountable officer to render accounts. Ayan. So, that is a crime. And definitely committed in relation to your public office, di ba? Illegal use of public funds, ayan. Di ba? Public office is not an element of the crime. Ah, ito. What if, for example, in a crime of murder? In a crime of murder. Uh, let me... Ask who will volunteer. Uh, is the crime of murder, uh, for example, a public official, let's say a mayor, committed murder? Okay? So, yung kanyang pinatay ay, let's say, employee niya. Employee, public employee, uh, government employee din. Question, yung, yung criminal case for murder ba, ipapile ba natin sa Sandigan Bayan? Kasi public officer siya, di ba? Oh, any, any, ano, an, any volunteer? Wala yung mag-volunteer? I will volunteer you. <laughs> Asis, ma'am. Asis? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, what is your answer, Mr. Asis? Depende, ma'am. Depende. Like for, yes, ma'am. Like, for instance, ma'am, uh, pinatay niya yung municipal accountant niya kasi uh, yung municipal accountant niya uh, isusumbong siya, ma'am, 
sa perang minal verse niya uh, as a mayor ma'am so pwede siya sa sandigan bayan uh, if that is the case but uh, pinatay niya but if pinatay na yung accountant niya for personal reasons like jealousy or um, uh, other cases uh, RTC siya ma'am okay Okay. Lang, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, under the law, uh, under uh, existing jurisprudence, generally, a crime from a uh, crime of murder, even if committed by a public official, will not fall under the jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan. Why? Because definitely, murder a murder. A crime of murder may be committed by any person, diba? whether a public official or a private individual. However, there is an exception to the rule. Okay, Just like what Mr. Asi said, by reason of his office, he committed the crime of murder. If that is the case, he should establish the intimate connection between the crime committed and the office of that public officer. So, if the intimate connection can be proven that because he is a mayor, had he not been the mayor, he would not have committed the offense. So that would be the issue. No? So, so if that can be proven, then he is under the jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan. All you need to do is to allege no, na, na by reason of his office, he had committed the offense. Another example is a judge... Uh, charged with acts of lasciviousness. And he committed it against his female employee, okay, under his uh, authority, no? under his office. So the case was filed in the Sandigan Bayan. Now the judge argued that uh, the Sandigan Bayan has no jurisdiction over the case because the crime committed is not in relation to his office. Because it is an act of lasciviousness. Diba? But the Supreme Court struck down his argument because uh, the Supreme Court uh, considered that the victim is a female casual employee where uh, who is assigned no, under his uh, court. If uh, kung hindi siya ang judge ng court na yan, Ano ba yung ano ano ba yung explanation di ba yung judge has ascendancy or authority over his ano his uh, subordinates so definitely uh, because of that uh, ascendancy or authority he can commit crime no he can he can commit acts no against his employee such as for example acts of lasciviousness. So, sabi ng Supreme Court, uh, the Supreme Court sustained the Sandigan Bayan because the information alleged with clarity that the accused used his official position to commit the acts charge. No? As alleged in the information, the victim was constrained to approach the accused because it was the latter whose recommendation was necessary for her appointment as a casual employee. But the accused imposed the condition that she has to become the girlfriend first and report to his office daily for a kiss. Okay, di ba? Dinamit niya yung kanyang authority in order to influence or to control his subordinate. Okay? So, there is an intimate connection between the crime committed and the position of the public official. Though, generally, that crime can be committed by a private individual. Ito siya. In the case of People versus Montejo, involving a city mayor accused of murder. Okay? So, ito yung tinanong ko kanina, no? Whether or not a criminal case for murder committed by a public official, will fall under the jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan. So, examining the allegations in the information, the court found that the information sufficiently indicated the existence of acts and events 
intimately connected to the public office of the accused. The information clearly alleged that the murder was a consequence of his act as a mayor, that he organized armed patrols and civilian commandos and provided them with arms. Also, acting as the city mayor and leader of the patrols, he ordered the arrest and maltreatment of the victim who died as a consequence. Okay? So, ang nayari pala dito, as a mayor, nag-organize pala siya ng mga armed personnel. And yung mga armed per nag in order niya, yung mga armed personnel na mag-aresto ng certain person. O, di ba? So, kung, kung hindi siya mayor, he cannot organize, no? These armed men, gawas na lang kung drug lord siya or any person who had a power, no? So, gigamit niya yung position, no, para makumit ang crime, okay? So, therefore, okay, while pub sabi ng Supreme Court, while public office is not an element of murder, the offense as alleged shows its commission while the accused was in the performance of his official functions. And the offense could not have been committed had he not held his office. Okay? Uh, I am um, am I clear with that? No? With with these other offenses or felonies? Okay na ba tayo? Or you still have questions? So just take note lang of the elements. No? I take note nyo lang yung elements. Kung na-comply siya, then definitely under the Sandigan Bayan yung criminal case. Okay, we will continue on no, next meeting on Friday. So, as 